He is known for his contributions as a British-born, Australian resident composer. He is recognized for his widely performed liturgical anthem and I Saw a New Heaven, a beloved piece in Anglican church music. His name is Edgar Leslie Bainton. In the world of music, there are legends that have left an indelible mark on the industry. One such legend is Edgar Leslie Bainton, a British-born composer who later became a resident of Australia. While he may not be a household name today, Bainton's contributions to the field of music are noteworthy. Bainton is best known for his liturgical anthem, And I Saw a New Heaven, a beloved piece in the repertoire of Anglican church music. Its soaring melodies and powerful harmonies have touched the hearts of many. But there is much more to Bainton's musical legacy than this popular anthem. For decades, Bainton's other works remained largely neglected. However, in recent years, there has been a resurgence of interest in his compositions, thanks to the availability of his music on CD. Listeners have had the opportunity to discover the depth and brilliance of Bainton's musical genius. Among his notable works is the hauntingly beautiful, Piano Concerto No. 1. This composition showcases Bainton's mastery of the piano and his ability to evoke a range of emotions through music. It is a masterpiece that highlights his unique talent and artistic vision. Another significant composition by Bainton is his, Symphony No. 2 in D minor. This symphony is a testament to Bainton's ability to create grand and sweeping musical landscapes. Its intricate melodies and rich orchestration captivate listeners, leaving them in awe of his skill and creativity. Bainton's rediscovered works have garnered admiration and praise from music enthusiasts around the world. His compositions have not only entertained and moved audiences but have also contributed to the rich tapestry of musical history. Edgar Leslie Bainton may not have achieved widespread fame during his lifetime, but his music continues to resonate with listeners today. His ability to create captivating and profound compositions has solidified his place as a legendary figure in the world of music. Through his works, Bainton's legacy lives on, reminding us of the transformative power of music. Born in Hackney, London, Edgar Bainton showed early signs of musical talent, playing the piano from a young age. At just nine years old, he made his first public appearance as a solo pianist, captivating audiences with his skill. Recognizing his potential, Bainton was awarded a music scholarship to King Henry VIII Grammar School in Coventry in 1891. His passion for music continued to grow, and in 1896, he won an open scholarship to the prestigious Royal College of Music to study theory with Walford Davies. During his time at the Royal College of Music, Bainton formed lasting friendships with fellow composers George Dyson, William Harris, and Rutland Bowden. These friendships provided him with support and inspiration throughout his career. Bainton's dedication and talent led him to receive a scholarship in 1899 to study composition under the renowned Sir Charles Villiers Stanford. It was during this time that he began keeping a notebook, documenting his compositions, with his first known surviving work, Prelude and Fugue in B Minor for Piano, written in 1898. In 1901, Bainton took on the role of piano professor at the Newcastle upon Tyne Conservatory of Music. Immersed in the local musical scene, he not only composed but also played and conducted. It was during this time that he fell in love with one of his former students, Ethel Eales, whom he married in 1905. Ethel was a talented pianist and singer and became a founding member of the Newcastle Bach Choir. Bainton's career continued to flourish as he was appointed the principal of the conservatory in 1912 and played a pivotal role in its expansion. Living in Stocksfield, near Hexham, Bainton found solace in the surrounding countryside, often taking long walks accompanied by poet Wilfred Gibson. Through Gibson, Bainton became part of the literary circle centered around Gordon Bottomley. He set many of Bottomley's poems to music and even composed an opera based on one of his lyric dramas. Bainton's love for his local area extended beyond his musical pursuits. He introduced his community to the works of Gustav Holst, Ralph Vaughan Williams, Arnold Bax, and other renowned composers. Additionally, he developed friendships with poet Elliot Dodds and cathedral organist William Ellis, further enriching his artistic connections. Do you want to explore more composers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.